guys live. Good morning, everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Just letting the rest of the family know I am live. I'm not sure how many of you will be able to join me this morning. We are in between holidays, and I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. We had a very relaxed day, a beautiful time spent with two of our really good friends, and uh, Honestly, we're looking really forward to the new year. Um, the, the celebrations are just another day for us, um, but what a new year holds is very valuable, and it's even more valuable when you harness it. And that's why I thought today we would talk about goal setting. Uh, goal setting is really important, but there's some aspects to goal setting that, uh, morning Rachel, but there are some extremely huge aspects to goal setting that people neglect to think about. Um, it's just like when, you know, you start the new year and you're going for your new year's resolutions and you start out strong and within a couple of weeks you peter out and um, a year later you find a little note that you were had this really great new year's resolution. And, you know, it happens every year. Uh, I... I'm guilty. I was notorious for that too uh, because I didn't understand all the concepts necessary to make something like that really come true. I mean, we have, I, I feel I have a very strong um, motivational push inside of me and, and there's others that do too, but we're still guilty of, of not following through and that's because there's so many other variables that hold a place in our lives. Uh, we get pulled in so many different directions, and we don't actually make these things habits, and that's why they peter out. So I wanted to talk about it today because there's, like I said, there's so many aspects to um, goal setting that we don't think about. How many of you um, feel that there aren't enough hours in a day for you? I'm guilty of that sometimes. Yesterday we had to do errands and I got back and I had a lot to do and a very little bit of time to get it done. However, I felt that in the beginning, but when you get focused, you can really get a lot of things accomplished and I, I managed to get what I needed to done. So when we think that there's not enough hours in our day, there's a couple reasons for that. One, that we're, we're stressed by our workload. Uh, two, that we've got way too much on our to-do list, which we are all guilty of. I have always been that way. I'm a very motivated person. I am um, I like a challenge, but I didn't realize how much I was over-challenging myself. And that causes stress, and you don't realize that. The other thing is there are so many uh, things in our lives that pull us in a million and a half different directions and that tend to be time wasters. How many of you have sat down and actually evaluated where you are wasting your time? Morning, Chad. Wasting, uh, wasting time is something that we are all guilty of also. Uh, many of us sit on Pinterest or Facebook or Instagram. Um, I'm guilty of getting stuck in my email box, which drives me crazy. And I've really been paying attention to that lately. And I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if it's a, I'm afraid I'm going to miss something important, but I have gotten it to the point where I look in the morning and then I don't look at it again until three or four o'clock in the afternoon because I have other things that are important. And that's something that we've got to um, pay attention to also is the things that we feel are um, an emergency and um, the things that are important. If you really analyze what you're putting your importance on, sometimes it's the things that really aren't the most important. So you need to pay attention to these things. And I feel that if we start really analyzing and paying attention to our time, I'm looking at something here real quick. I want to put my notes up on my on my other screen here for me, so forgive me. Um, the big thing is when we start paying attention to these things, paying attention to where our time is being wasted. Um, oftentimes, like I said, I was guilty of putting myself out there and making a very large to-do list. Something else I was really guilty of was saying yes to things that I should have said no to. We are all people pleasers, aren't we? I am. I know there's many of you out, others out there that are people pleasers too. And we want to 
please people. We want to help others. But in turn, what we end up doing is kind of sabotaging ourselves. And when I got sick, that was when I really realized what I needed to do for myself. Yeah, I hear you, Chad. Email, email, all those things. Though. We, we all have these little vices that we hang on to. You know, like I said, mine's an email. And, and I, you know, I want to respond to people on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. But I have to schedule it because otherwise it just becomes... it. Y there's lots of bunny trails, dadgummit. And I know you all are familiar with bunny trails. You just might call it something different. But if we can pay attention to these things and start really analyzing and, and also um, determining what is most important to us. Um, in today's society, a lot of people choose to think that by having material things, the more you have, the more you do, the more happy you will be. And how many of you have established that that absolutely zaps your joy? It is the complete opposite. And for our family, that is something that we have found a long time ago, that simplicity and um, relationships and um, fulfillment coming from God is where your joy comes from. It's not from stuff. So there's a lot of things that you kind of have to analyze to determine where you want to be. And by figuring out how many time hogs you have in your day-to-day, -day, uh, you'll free yourself up a whole lot. And when you free yourself up, you will have room to put in the things that you really want to accomplish. So that's why it's important to have a list of goals. Um, there's still more to it than that though. And I do encourage you to sit down on a, with a piece of paper because once you write them down, it's so much more powerful. Um, I'm gonna mention a, a program I use. I use Evernote. Um, there's a link for it in the description below. It's treyerwilderness.com slash Evernote. And I also use an application called Nosebe. And that's treyerwilderness.com slash N-O-Z-B-E. Again, it, it's in the description. Uh, Nosebe is a uh, calendar or a to-do scheduling um, application, which is out of this world because I have four businesses I'm taking care of, uh, four individuals that we're keeping track of time on, and, and a lot of goals and a lot of to-dos. So to be able to organize it, and to be able to see it in front of me makes it so much easier. But also writing things down. Now, whether you're using an app or a piece of paper, it doesn't really matter as long as you're recording it. But I use Evernote very faithfully because it syncs between my iPad, my iPhone, and my laptop. So no matter where I am, I have everything I need in front of me that I've been recording. Uh, I keep all my important notes in there. Um, it's a really great application. I think I have 3,000 notes in there. Um, but it's a great, great way to keep track of things. Um, I have. I've used Trello too, Todd. And good to have you joining me. I didn't see you pop in. Hi, Mike. Good to have you. And yes, Trello is another good app. The thing is, there's a lot of good applications out there that you can utilize. Um, I've used other things, and I've just found a great process for myself. But there are others out there, and that's the thing. It's okay to experiment and try different apps to figure out what works best for you. Like the iPad and the iPhones come with a, a reminder system, but it just wasn't robust enough, and a note system, but it wasn't robust enough. I can search through my notes, and it'll actually search my photos that I put in there as well for words. So it'll find whatever I'm looking for. So it is a really cool application. But what I want you to do is sit down and record what you want to achieve this year. But something else I want you to do is create another note that is a list of things that you've not only accomplished in 2017, but things that you might have failed in 2017. And I want you to look at it with gratitude, both sides of that spectrum there, because for one, gratitude is huge. We've talked about that in the gratefully prepared um, process that we did in November. And I'm going to continue with that because I really feel that that is p part of life. It's got to be part of your life for you to have success and joy. Is noticing what you're grateful for. And the reason I'm saying that you should be grateful for your mistakes is because through those mistakes, you should be learning. 
you shouldn't be walking away from those mistakes or failures or whatever they were and, and trying to bury them. You should be learning from those mistakes and pushing forward and pushing through them. One of the things that we have said on our homestead, and I'll show you the picture, hopefully it'll show up. It's on our Instagram page, but the best things in life happen on the other side of our comfort zone. I don't know that you can see the words on there. It's pretty good glare. But on Instagram, there's a mountain man hanging off the mountainside. Not only are the best things in life on the other side of our comfort zones, um, it's, it's stepping us through fear. We have fears. We all have fears of accomplishing certain goals. We have fears of uh, certain tasks. So we procrastinate on those tasks where what you need to do is push through those fears and you will find the best parts of life on the other side of those fears and your comfort zone. Because technically your comfort zone is, is riddled with fear. When you hit that point where there's fear, that's actually a good thing. That fear is what should be catapulting you forward, not sending you backwards and, and making you comfortable. You want to push through that. And that's what you need to focus on because I'm very guilty of that too. I find that's another thing that I found was a time waster for me is that when I had something I had to research and learn how to do in order to push forward, I would procrastinate. And it's not, it's not a, procrastination is not a success tool by any stretch of the word. And when you find that you're doing it, you really need to pay attention to that as well. So there's a list of things in the description below that we are talking about today. And it wouldn't hurt for you to cut and paste those things and to set those things aside for yourself so that you can pay attention to them and start really mindfully watching those things. So, you know, what, the first one was, you know, many of us don't have enough hours in a day. And that, I said, is because we overcommit. The other one is um, paying attention to your time wasters. There's so many of them. And once we pay attention to those, you know, it really makes a difference. Um, are you overwhelmed with your to-do list? Many of us are because we put too much on our to-do list that is just not feasibly possible to do in a day. Now... I have been using a system in Evernote where, um, and I will share this in a future video, where I create my to-do list for the day and I, I basically copy the note and, and move it forward the next day. That way if there's things on it that I didn't get to that weren't pressing but need to get done, they still get carried forward, they don't ever get lost in the shuffle. Um, but they're there. So there's parts of my to-do list that are extremely important and those are the ones I focus on. The other parts of my to-do list are things that I do want to get done um, when I can fit them in. So, you know, setting up your to-do list so that it's a, something that you can accomplish and not overwhelm yourself with is really important. Now, one that we didn't talk about, and this is really, really huge. Have you ever paid attention to what you say to yourself? Now, many of you are going to be like, I don't talk to myself. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I know I'm not alone, and, and everybody does it. Sometimes it's not even out loud. Sometimes it's just in our head. You know, you stooge. What'd you do that for? Or, you know, we're constantly very hard on ourselves. When I was sick, I, I caught myself, like, saying to myself that I'm just old. I'm not old. I was just sick. Well, I might be old, but that's beside the point. And it's you're only as old as you feel or as old as you make yourself, and I choose not to be that. So, and I choose to be vibrant. But I was telling myself that. And, you know, the more we tell ourselves th these things, you know, some people focus on their weight. Some people focus on their looks. Some people focus on how they are accomplishing things. You know, it, it depends what's important to us, I guess. Um, but everybody is caught saying negative things to themselves. And something you got to realize is those negative things over time, become ingrained in you and you are holding yourself back. And I know that sounds funny and I know many of you, you know, ch you know, might blow that off, but pay attention. Pay attention to what you're saying to yourself. And you're going to catch yourself and you're going to do it. But if you can turn those things around and as you catch yourself, create a positive out of them and and keep moving, at, the more you keep creating that positive, the more the negative will disappear and the more that positive will hold true. And the more you say that positive thing, the more chance of that for that to come true for you. You know, I am successful. 
I am successful. I can do this. I can do this. You know, all those, you know, it's simple things, but writing those down, you know, you guys, you guys, you guys may think I'm nuts and that's all right. I'm not worried about that, but I'm going to try to spin this around. I got my cord connected. Hang on a second here. Guess who? I've got a little board of things that I've got written down for myself. So, remind yourself, remind yourself that you can do this. Remind yourself that, you know, you are able to accomplish these things. When you're dealing with the hard, I, I like to look at the hard things as a challenge. You need adventure in your life. When you try to focus on getting comfortable, you're going to, you're going to lose your happiness because Comfortable means there's not necessarily any adventure left in your life. And, and I found that myself through being sick and at a different pace and, and focusing on being well and trying to be comfortable. I realized that what was missing for me was my adventures and I needed to start taking baby steps to put those adventures back in my life. You know, not just hiking on a trail, but hiking off the trail and up the mountain. You know, um, right now I'm looking for, uh, snowshoeing poles because I need a little bit more stability, but I don't want to be held back from where I can go with my snowshoes. So we need to focus on keeping that adventure in our lives, but honing things down and funneling them down to what we want. How often in life do we find that we are basing our existence on someone else's desires for us? Our parents, our spouse, and, and not that you should try to um, pull away from your spouse, that your spouse might be controlling a situation, but that's where communication comes in, and that's a whole other ballgame. Um, communication in a marriage makes things really strong, and um, it's important that, we're, that we communicate and that we understand each other's desires, dreams, and goals also, and that's something that the mountain man and I do because... You know, if one person is adventurous and the other one is comfortable, you're going to have a gap there. And and if one person's goals aren't being met but the others are, you're going to have a struggle there too. So when you kind of blend and understand what each other's goals are and what you want to accomplish and also make efforts to help each other accomplish them, you've got two very happy people in your marriage. You've got an awesome communication and, and you're going places. So keep that in mind too because communication within your, your family unit – on your goals and life dreams and desires is really important. Even with my son, you know, right now our son is embracing a dream of his to uh, put an application in with Lego in Denmark. Uh, I'm really proud of him. That would mean he would be moving very, very far away. But technology today allows me to talk to you, allow me to talk to him. But keeping those... Um, communications open within your family and cheering each other on can be really huge. Um, if you're lacking that maybe in your family, and you, I would suggest that you continue to try, um, but having um, accountability partners is really good too. I love having uh, accountability partners uh, to make sure that I'm reaching my goal. My virtual assistant, Michelle, is very good at being my accountability partner, as is my virtual assistant, David, and many of my friends. And like I said, my family. But if you, but the focus here is that, you know, so many people tell us what to do. Our parents have these great dreams and desires and goals for us to accomplish, but that's not necessarily what our dreams, desires, and goals are. And um, you hit a point in life where you realize that it's important for you to accomplish what is important for you. Um, that's not to say that we need to be rude and ignorant to people that are trying to control us, but that means that we need to kind of be a little more stern and, and let it be known that it's okay, that this is something that I desire and I'm happy to do and I'm happy to accomplish. I mean, I'm 47 and I still had those strings attached where people were still trying to um, move me like a puppet and it's, that, that will zap your joy too. So it's okay to focus on what's important to you and to reach those goals. And also, at the same time, when you have those people that are trying to puppeteer, um, it's important um, for you to not allow them to zap your joy and, take, and to try to um, keep you from reaching that goal. 
Um, well, I understood, Chad. And, um, you know, if you do have those people in your life that are, um, that need to hear this, um, this is going to go on YouTube. It's also going to be uh, a part of my upcoming class, Getting Organized in a Crazy Busy World. We all struggle trying to get organized, not just with our goals, but our, our to-do lists, our calendars, our um, finances. All those things will be included in the upcoming class. But it's, it's important that we... It's not that we're being self-centered when we focus on our goals. Um, you can become self-centered if you focus on your goals and lose sight of also the other important things in your life, such as your family, your children, um, even yourself, that you're so focused on accomplishing your goals that you forget to even take care of yourself. That's not what it's about, and that's where you also need to hone in and keep yourself from becoming self-centered. Um, and our goals should also... Part of our goals, as I mentioned in the beginning, is what gives us joy. What are the things that we want to accomplish this year? And when, it, when I'm focusing on my goals, my goals always include my family and my children in some way. And, and my husband also, because I want to spend more time with my husband throughout the year. I want to do specific things this year with him. So that is where my, I'm honing that in. Same with my son. Um, might be uh, progressing him uh, to reach his goal. Um, but we need to, we need to keep, keep track of where our goals are taking us so that our goals aren't creating a self-centered person or someone that's burning out because our goals are so big or our goals are so little and we're getting disturbed because we're not reaching them. So there's an extremely fine line in setting up these goals. And that's where I wanted to point this book out to you guys. This is your best year ever, and it's a five-step plan for achieving your uh, most, most important goals. I have been following Michael Hyatt for a long time. Michael Hyatt is an amazing um, educator, and what I like about Michael is that he is just... Uh, He's just like you and I, but he's sharing what has worked for him. He is an extreme researcher. Um, he dives in very deep to study his topics, and he's been focusing on these topics for a good portion of his life. And I just find his resources to be very, very helpful for me. Um, one of the things from this book is that uh, I'm going to point out a couple quotes that I've or things that I've noted in this book that pertain to what we're talking about today and things that I've been saying for a long time. So it just helps me to also know that they're being reinforced by professionals that focus on this stuff. But he said, if you keep telling yourself the truth, it will eventually fit and you'll get more comfortable with it. So when you're self-talking and you're, uh, you know, continuously starting to tell yourself the positive things, you know, like I told you before, it's going to shift and it's going to turn and things are going to be really good for you because you're going to be telling yourself the positive things and the truths that you need to embrace. Something else is uh, giving thanks for outrageous abundance inoculates us from the sense of fear, failure, and discontent we sometimes experience and instead creates a path towards success, joy, and fulfillment. What have I been saying, guys, all along? Gratefully prepared. Being grateful and, and even no matter how big or small the thing is that you are, are noticing, it makes such a huge difference in our lives. Another thing is we think that if we had every comfort available to us, we'd be happy. We equate comfort with happiness and now we're so comfortable we're miserable. There's no struggle in our lives and no sense of adventure. And that is, like I said, something that the mountain man and I established a long time ago. We are adventurers. We are embracers. And when you finally hit a point where you're comfortable and you lose that sense of adventure, you lose your joy. So it's important to keep those things in your life, in your marriage, in, in your relationship with your children. So creating goals and, and keeping track of those goals is really, really important. Now, I encourage you to to definitely pick this book up. I will be reading this book multiple times. You can see that I've got stickies in here. I've got markers in here. It's highlighted to the hilt. I've got highlights all over in this book. I didn't used to do that, but I have been reading some really very powerful books um, 
this past year, which I will be sharing a couple others with you that I will be reading multiple times over and over again because there are just so many powerful takeaways. But you can find Michael's book by going to treyerwilderness.com slash your best year ever. And this is something I would highly recommend that you pick up, either in the ebook form or the print book, um, whatever works for you. I find that my best reading, sadly, is done once I go flat on my back at night in bed. I am able to finally get my iPad out, and I need to unwind. I know they say the blue light's not good for you, but I get to unwind and chill my brain because my brain is spinning all day long. So for read reading for me is good. I occasionally bounce the iPad off my forehead while I'm laying there because it relaxes me to sleep. Not that the books are boring, just that that's what I need. But I encourage you to pick these books up and this one especially. I will be sharing others with you in the upcoming um, videos I'm going to do with you guys because I feel that good resources and education and constantly improving ourselves and building on our knowledge base is something that's going to keep that event adventure in our lives and keep us growing. It's important that we grow and that we don't go stagnant and, and you know, when you're stagnant, you, you lose your joy too. I was blessed with the gift of your homesteading book. So stoked and can't wait to get, it. oh, good deal. I'm so glad, Chad. Um... I'm sorry guys, it's kind of, it, it is an interesting task doing live video and talking and also reading what people are sharing. Um, so always bear with me on that one. But um, the one other thing that I had um, in here was to pay attention to the blessings in your life. And I've already covered that. Um, but it's, it's really, truly important. The more you focus on the gratitude in your life, the easier it is for us to embrace our dreams, to embrace our to-do list. You know, some of us will wake up and we, you know, you might have had a bad dream. It got you off on a bad note. Um, you may just be gloomy. You know, we all go through so many different emotions and it's, it's human nature. The enemy is always on attack. If you have something that the enemy can grab a hold of, he will. And he will use that to his advantage and whisper in your ear all day long. Just flick him off your shoulder. Put some positive self-talk going on, put some good music on, pay attention to what you want to accomplish and, and, and strive. I have faith in all of you that you can accomplish your goals. Uh, we all, you know, have done things in the past that we have not been successful with. We have all done things that we wanted to start and, and never finished. We petered out. But by starting this process that I've started with you today, this will get you on track for our next class where I will continue to share with you how to make these things a reality and not just a New Year's resolution that peters out. Making and setting goals and not just goals that are once accomplished but goals that are to become habits like spending more time with God or spending more time with your children. I had devoted it last year that every morning when I get up I have a routine. I get my coffee or my tea and I come and I sit in my office. I've made a comfort spot for myself and I spend however long I feel I need with God. Some mornings it might be a half an hour. I have a minimum of a half an hour for sure every day. But I've been up here already sometimes for two hours because I was being saturated with intense and really great information that pertained and that I needed to hear. You know, so... You, you know, someone might look at that and go, oh my gosh, that's such a two-hour waste. I could never give up that kind of time. Being self-employed, that two hours of time boosted my day to such an incredible height that I accomplished probably two days' worth of to-dos that day. So it's how you look at it. It's how you look at it. It's where you're vesting your time. When you are vesting your time in something that's going to grow you and, and push you forward, that time is never a hindrance. It is well spent. And that's what I learned. So that's how I start my day. And that became a habit. And, and when I don't do that, or I can't do that for whatever reason, my day feels off kilter. Uh, so I find other ways to squeeze that time in at a later time in my day when things don't work out. But it's very rare anymore that that doesn't work out because the rest of my family is doing the same thing. So it's making those goals and, and their, their future goals that you want to become habits, it's turning them into a habit. And when you turn them into a habit, it's very powerful. And, and that's what you want to do. And, and when you have things on your to-do list that are important to you, um, making time for them and giving up 
pin, Pinterest or Facebook or whatever is so, so, in, it's, it's so much more valuable. Yes, Todd, so true. Time with God is the most important. It is. It really, really is. And until you realize that, and, and some of you that are following may not be Christians, and that's okay, and I don't want you to leave despite us talking about God, um, but it is, it is something very powerful. You know, you, we all go through life to a certain level, pulling God in, knowing there's, for some of you, knowing there's a higher power, um, but until you really embrace it and you really embrace what you can gain from it, your life is incomplete. I will tell you that right now. Um, and it didn't take me getting sick for that to happen. I have been pulling closer to God for a long, long time and was very close to God. But when I got sick, uh, God became very close to me. Um, and it was quite intense. And, and since then there's just, I, I can't turn back. I must be true to myself and that, and, and to God. And that's what I'm doing. So it's not meant to offend anybody. It's just, it's, it's the way I live and it's very powerful and very intense. And I wish it for all of you because it's just beyond amazing. And, and Michael Hyatt, you know, is a very spiritual man too. And, um, he, he points that out too. It, it's really, guys, it's really, when we look at our goals um, and our life as a whole, and you start really seeing what you desire most, that's where your goals will come into place. And when you make those a habit and, and start fulfilling those things and keeping adventure in your life by dating your spouse and, and having a date night with your kids and playing games and spending quality time with your kids instead of in front of a screen. It's just, it's incredible. And it really opens things up. And this fast-paced world and this gotta have it world kind of makes it hard sometimes to see the true picture. And I guess for us being out here with no TV for over 10 years and living a life that requires hard work, but it's something that we do together, it just, it just has opened our eyes to so much, um, such a different place. And regardless where you are, if you start really paying attention to what's important to you, focusing on the things I pointed out today, you will be, um, heading in such the right direction and things will start to really unfold for you. And I wish that for you this year. So I'm not going to ramble on anymore. I'm really grateful for you guys sharing your time with me today. Um, do you guys have any, um, success stories or things that you want to share, um, in regard to what you've encountered with, uh, you know, this, this process of goal setting and, and, um, really making your life adventurous, uh, there's so many there's so many different ways that you can go about doing this but when you focus on the the big things that's when it starts to shift but you know there's not there's not a uh, nothing set in stone you know what works for me may not fully work for you as far as how I I uh, dictate my day how I go about my to do's and my um, my scheduling um, but when you find something that works, that's really important. You know, you may not like using the computer or apps to do your things. You might like pencil and paper. And that is totally cool, too, because I have found that with my budgeting, um, it works out better for me to be able to write things out. It's more concrete in my head. It's more concrete for me, and I can easily open it up and look at it. Not that I couldn't open an app, but it just, for some reason, that's just very different for me. So... You truly got to find what works for you, but when you when you start paying attention to the things that I uh, pointed out today, that's when things will really shift for you, and, and I hope that you find more free time. One thing I touched on that I didn't explain and fully go into is saying no um, when, when you typically say yes. It's a hard thing. We all do it, but when you learn to say to somebody, you know what, I need to go home and check my schedule, and I will get back to you on that. Instead of saying yes or no, because your first response is going to be a yes, and then you're going to get in your car and you're going to go, oh my word, I so wish I would have said no, and I said yes again. So give yourself that freedom by using those simple words that, you know what, I need to check my calendar and with my family and see if that's going to work for us, and I'll get back to you. Miss Ashley Glassman, I am so glad to have you in here. Girl, I love you, and I hope you're having a good day. Pray for you every day, girl. But guys, that's that's what it's all about, is learning to control your time, to harness your time, to harness your goals, to harness your schedule, and to make things and your life work for you. 
not for everybody else, not for society, not for, not for anybody else, but you, God, and your family. And one last thing I'm going to point out, and Michael Hyatt said this. I learned this actually from Michael Hyatt. Um, three, four years ago, I took his uh, Five Steps to Your Best Year Ever class. And um, in there, he stated that in his, in his family, it's, it's God first, and then him, and then his family. And at first I thought, wow, how selfish. But then I realized what he was saying, and it's so powerful, and it's so extremely important, and I want to encourage you to do the same. By putting yourself next, that means that you are taking care of yourself, and you are looking out for yourself, your health, your well-being, your, your strength, because you're first putting your time to God, and then you. And it makes you not only a better person, it makes you a better husband, it makes you a better uh, father or, or uh, mother. It, it it makes you better. Chad, I can't see everything that's showing up there, so I will check that when I am done with this and um, and communicate with you in, in the comment. Um, but guys, that's really powerful um, when we look out for ourselves because part of creating our to-do sometimes is for our families. You know, I have to do things for my husband. I uh, put his videos out and make phone calls and do all kinds of different things. Same with my son. You know, so our to-dos aren't just based on ourselves. It's based on our families. And, you know, when it all comes together like that and you've got this massive list of things to do sometimes, it does happen. Um, just when, when we put our, when we focus on God and then put ourselves next and really, you know, there have been times where I've had to just go stop what I'm doing and go lay flat. I get, I get sick and I don't feel good. And if I wouldn't take that time to take care of myself, I wouldn't be any good to my family at all or to myself or anything else that I had to accomplish. So remember to take time for you. Remember to put yourself in this scenario and remember to focus on you. So maybe one of your goals is exercising more throughout the year. Honestly, exer daily exercise is great. I either walk with my dogs or I ride 13 miles on a stationary bike every day. And the purpose of that is to rejuvenate myself so that I can be a better person. It's looking out for my health. It's looking out for my well-being. So these are things too that you can think about. And I'm glad I mentioned them and, and went off on that bunny trail, but it's important stuff. And I want to encourage that for you guys. Um, these things that I have found for myself have been extremely powerful catalysts that have boosted me forward and, and I'd like to say made me a better person. Um, and I'd like that, you know, for you guys too, to find your peace and your joy and, and your comfort zones and, and extend out of those comfort zones and be adventurous and find your health and, and be able to reach the goals you set for yourself. So guys, I really thank you for joining me today and thank you Facebook Live and Internet for not bogging down and, and spinning for hours and hours on end. We actually had a straight shot today. How nice was that? But guys, I wish you well and I'm going to wish you a happy new year because I won't see you till next Wednesday and we will continue on on this subject because I would like to see you learning to make your future goals habits and your one-time goals a success. So guys, have a great day, have a safe and uh, happy New Year's celebration, and I'm wishing you a healthy, happy, joyous, and goal-filled New Year. So guys, take care, God bless, and I will see you next Wednesday, and we're going to focus that at 10.30, not 10 o'clock, because 10 is just not working for some reason. So let's do 10.30 next Wednesday, all right guys? Take care, God bless, and thank you all for joining me.